All right, we are live. Your gut health is the key to everything. Digestion, immunity, energy levels, performance, speed of recovery from workouts, preventing disease, and even how you feel every day. But did you know the food you're eating might be destroying your gut health? You could be doing everything right, but if you're missing one crucial element, your gut bacteria may be suffering. When I was in my 20s, I abused drugs and alcohol and my gut health hit rock bottom. So I started learning about the microbiome and made changes. But I couldn't shake the weekend habits of alcohol, drugs, and fast food fast enough. So I tried cooking healthy meals during the week, but it seemed like all my hard work was undone by my weekend choices. I didn't realize that the bacteria in my gut, which thrived on junk food and alcohol, were actually communicating with my brain and hijacking my cravings. But once I starved those bad bacteria, everything changed. The cravings started to fade, the pull of addiction on the weekend at, um, started to fade as well, and I was finally able to reclaim my gut health. And today, I'll show you exactly how I did it and how you can do the same by changing the foods you eat. So let's dive in. I don't have my brother here with me today. He is just returning from his vacation over in Vietnam. So I'm all on my own. And these live streams are just so much easier for me to do when I have interaction from you legends. So anybody that's watching live, give me a shout out, say hello, let me know that I'm not just talking to myself here. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to share, uh, put it up in the live chat on YouTube. So let's talk about the gut microbiome, what it is and what gut health is. Quick introduction. So the gut microbiome is basically anything from through your entire digestive system. So right up from your, the top of your throat, uh, right down through your stomach and through your colon from top to bottom. So the, it, that, that's what we call the microbiome. And there's trillions of bacteria, uh, viruses and fungi live in our uh, bodies and in our um, bacteria, forming a complex ecosystem called the gut microbiome. This is really interesting. I've actually read a book called 10% Human. And within our entire body, we are only actually 10% human. For every one human cell that there is, there are nine cells of bacteria and fungi in our body. It's incredible. So we are basically an ecosystem of life, just like the world around us is an ecosystem of life. Our bodies are an ecosystem of life. And, you know, all around our mouth, our nose, our ears, our eyes, all that bacteria, it's all going in and it's all, um, you know, largely determining our health. <clears throat> Excuse me. A healthy microbiome helps with digestion. Uh, it produces essential nutrients and it regulates the immune system and protects against harmful germs. So there is more and more research coming out that shows that, that health really starts with your gut microbiome. And you know this old saying that our parents probably told us when we were younger, I know mine did, you are what you eat. It couldn't be more true because the foods that you eat are going to dictate the quality of your microbiome. So various factors that influence um, the balance of the microbiome in the gut are things like, so things that negatively affect the microbiome, antibiotics. I didn't realize this until I you know, started this journey when I was in my 20s and I started to look at my lifestyle choices and how I could improve my health and starting to learn this stuff. But uh, antibiotics, they, are, they kill bacteria and they don't discriminate. And it seems so funny for me to even say this now, but when I was younger and I heard this, it really surprised me. This idea that when you, when you take antibiotics, they don't just go through the body and ignore the good bacteria and kill all the bad bacteria, they kill everything. So when you take antibiotics, it's like putting a nuclear bomb in your digestive system that just wipes everything out. And of course there are uh, very, very important health reasons as to why people would have antibiotics. And antibiotics has been one of the, the, the biggest leaps forward in the last century um, with uh, medicine and um, uh, that's increased uh, health, you know. Penicillin is, is one of the, the biggest reasons why we've been able to extend our, uh, our life expectancy. But at the same time, it also has a destructive effect on our microbiome. And so if you've ever had antibiotics, then your microbiome has been negatively affected from it. And that is something that has to be rebuilt. 
Uh, birth control is also really destructive to the microbiome, um, medication in general, and other things that also affect the health of our microbiome is even the way that we were born. If we were born by a C-section or via natural birth, that is actually the first thing that triggers our microbiome because um, through the vagina, the vagina is lined with bacteria. And when a baby is born, that's their very first exposure to the outside environment. They get covered from head to toe uh, in bacteria. Uh, and in really good bacteria, that's the first thing that triggers their immune system and their immune system reacts to that bacteria. And that that triggers your immune system. And so babies that are born by a C-section, they actually, and of course, there's nothing you can do about this, but unfortunately, um, that is a, that can negatively affect the microbiome. So, uh, alcohol also is incredibly destructive to the microbiome. It it fuels it feeds bad uh, unhealthy bacteria, um, at, which increases inflammation, and also junk foods. You know, uh, bad poor food choices are a really big thing. They just cause uh, havoc in your microbiome. Things that positively affect the microbiome uh, vegetables so plants and a variety of different plants are really beneficial to the microbiome so the research shows that eating 30 plant varieties in a week is really good for the microbiome and i used to think wow 30 30 plant varieties i consider myself a pretty healthy person but that's hard even for me and that is uh but the thing with plant varieties is Herbs and spices are a plant variety. Nuts and seeds are a plant variety. So, you know, if you had like a five spice mix that you put in your dinner, there's five plants right there. Um, dietary fiber, so fiber rich foods such as fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, they fuel beneficial gut bacteria. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things and I'm gonna go into that more, but I'll, I'll talk you through first, I'll talk you through my experience. My, I'll go deeper into my experience and, and what I've done. Actually, you know what? I will, I will continue just uh, framing what is good for uh, bacteria. I think this will work better if I do it like that. So the, you know, what happens when you eat, um, you know, there's, uh, we've all heard of probiotics and prebiotics. So probiotics are, are good bacteria and prebiotics are the food for good bacteria. And that all comes from um, high fiber foods. So all of the research, there's, there's no research study that's ever shown that low fiber diets are good for health. It seems to be that the more fiber that we can consume, the the healthier our microbiome is going to um, be. So diets low in fiber, especially those with processed foods, basically starve beneficial bacteria, leading to reduced diversity in the gut microbiome. And, um, you know, there's, there's studies where they've taken um, tribes in Africa that still live uh, the same way that we used to live 30,000 years ago and they've introduced um, a Western diet to them. So a low fiber, high fat, high processed foods diet and they all experience inflammation in the gut. And inflammation in the gut is causing a lot of problems through the rest of your body. So foods like, so back to foods that are good for the uh, gut bacteria. Foods like fruits, vegetables, tea and coffee are also good for the microbiome. So drinking a variety of teas and even drinking coffee. Uh, even red wine is apparently good for the gut microbiome. I'll talk uh, later in this episode about my personal experience with alcohol and why I don't drink alcohol anymore. I'll also talk about what happened to me a week ago when I had two drinks and how much it wrecked an entire week for me. Just having two um, two beers. I, I couldn't believe it. It was my first time having alcohol in three months and I felt like having a beer and I, I regret it so badly. <laughs> um, dark chocolate even promotes um, healthy bacteria and bacterial diversity due to the polyphenols, um, which are antioxidants compounds. Now, in contrast, um, foods high in dietary fat and sugary sodas decrease bacterial diversity. And basically anything that's high in sugar, like when you look at the processed and refined foods, they're just not going to do good for you. Now, um, food preparation um, is 
also really important for the microbiome. So we want minimally processed foods, fresh foods. So steamed or raw vegetables are better for the gut compared to fried or heavily processed foods. And fermented foods are also really good for the gut, like kimchi and sauerkraut, yogurt, kombucha. They're all rich in probiotics, which introduce beneficial bacteria to the gut. And I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to go through what I do and how this all uh, has helped for me. Um, so, you know, through positive when you start to recognize this journey with the gut, uh, you know, the relationship to gut health and your health, your overall health. <clears throat> the, the, the first thing that happened to me was I was looking at basically almost everything that I did and realizing how, how bad the choices that I've been making were impacting my gut health. And when you start to see the way that your gut communicates with your brain, um, and it even, it even affects your emotions, it affects cravings. So the, the, the bacteria in your gut actually create food cravings. So it, you're, you've probably, if you're somebody that's watching this and you're thinking, how can I improve my gut health? You can probably relate to food cravings where you get to a time of the day and you crave some sugar, like you really want some chocolate or you want some sweets or um, you want a biscuit or whatever that is for you. That's actually the bacteria in your gut, in your, in your microbiome that is starting to starve and that it is, it is communicating with your brain and saying, give me the food that I need. That's what that um, food craving is. And bacteria actually uh, dies pretty quickly. It dies, I've read that bacteria dies usually in about three to five days, most bacteria. So they, you know, they, they self-replicate and they, um, uh, you know, just like all, all life, you know, it, 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 it replicates itself and it needs a certain fuel to uh, thrive. So there's certain bacteria that thrive on um, vegetables, but they'll thrive on um, uh, chemicals and vitamins that are in certain vegetables. So there'll be certain bacteria that will thrive on purple carrots and there'll be certain bacteria that will thrive on, you know, apples. I'm, I'm just giving examples here. And so this is why they say the diversity in the fruits and vegetables that you eat is really important. But, you know, back to <clears throat> the, the cravings that you get. So when you're, when you're sitting there and you're craving a certain food, that is bacteria saying, I need this food to survive. I am slowly dying. And that was the first big step to me with cleaning up my gut health once I understood that because I started to be able to create this relationship between this feeling of craving to, oh wow, that's this unhealthy bacteria that is starving right now and it's dying. And that was the first thing that was, that sort of empowered me to, to, to not <laughs> go and um, give in and go and get some chocolate or go and get, you know, some, some nasty food like that. And once I started to do that, like my personal experience with this was that it, honestly, it took me years to even get to a point where I wasn't um, abusing my body on the weekends with drugs and alcohol because I would, um, when I, I would have a really healthy week <laughs> and then I would get to the weekend and I would justify what I was about to do by, well, I've, you know, had this great and healthy week, like I deserve this. And I think that is probably the second most destructive mentality that, that I ever had. The first most destructive mentality was when I wasn't even aware that I should be eating healthy foods during the week and I was just trashing my body and then even during the week I was still just eating shit food. I was eating takeaway food and, and things like that. But you know, this 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 next step where you're eating healthy foods during the week, but then you're rewarding yourself with poor food choices and, and alcohol and drug abuse on the weekend. It's only one step below that because these, the bacteria that's in your gut, from what I've learned, it never truly dies like the bad bacteria, like you'll, you'll, you'll kill it and you'll, you'll cause it to, to shrink down to such a small amount that it is um, not causing you health problems but it's opportunistic, you know, all life in the world is opportunistic. It's always looking for that opportunity to grow and that opportunity to thrive. And the second that you start to, um, you know, feed it again, feed the, the unhealthy bacteria with poor food choices and, and alcohol and, um, you know, even increased stress, then it's going to thrive again and it starts to, <clears throat> you know, multiply and it starts to colonize your uh, microbiome and then start, you know, increasing chronic inflammation and, and all these problems that happen from it. And it's, it's really interesting to look at 
what the effects of these things are. Something for me that recently that's caused me to really take another step deeper into my gut health <clears throat> is the way that chronic inflammation affects injuries. And so I've had a slap tear in both shoulders. Those are the, the two most traumatic injuries that I've had in the past decade and a half. But I've also, you know, 15 years ago, I fractured my spine when I was in the army. And I've got something called spondylolisthesis and spondylosis as a result in L4 and L5. And so that's the degeneration of a disc there. Um, I've almost got bone on bone in my spine there. I've had a torn meniscus. I've had golfer's elbow and tennis elbow. And all these injuries when you're 46 years old, like I am or older, they're always, they, they never fully repair. Like if I get an MRI or a CT scan on any of those joints, it always shows those injuries. And what happens is that what I've learned over working with exceptional physical therapists is sports physical therapists is that there's certain injuries that you'll never completely fix. They'll always show up on a scan, but the way that you can live your life and the, the, what will determine whether you can partake in the activities that you want to be able to do or not is the way that you can strengthen your body and the way that you can manage that pain. And inflammation is a huge part of that. So for me, what happens, so for example, last weekend when I chose to have two beers and I really thought two beers, I'll be fine, you know, it won't be that much of an issue. And two beers wiped me out for a week. It, it really did. And I'll, I'll talk you through why that is. But the first thing is that if I have, if I have alcohol or sugar or anything like that, because now I, I do eat um, such a clean diet, the first thing that I notice besides the hangover the next day is that um, the chronic inflammation starts to rise again and I immediately start to feel aches and pains where my injuries are that I wasn't feeling before. So I'll start to feel my slap tears. I'll, I'll reach up for something in a cupboard and I'll go, oh, there's that shoulder injury again or there's that pain or I'll start to feel it in my knees and my hips and my lower back. And so that was a really big thing for me to start looking at with gut health when I started to realize that I could actually reduce the aches and pains in my body from you know, improving my gut health. But the other thing that happened to me over the past week from, you know, drinking alcohol again, is that I immediately started to crave uh, sugar and started to crave sugary treats again. Like it, like it just, it just had this immediate effect on my, on my gut microbiome. And I gave into that for a couple of days after having those two beers. Uh, my wife and I just looked at each other and said, ah, let's just, you know, let's get some chocolate or let's get some stuff that we don't normally get. And that had a roll on effect because that made me feel, you know, low energy, poor mood, poor sleep the next day, all of that stuff. And so I, it was really interesting for me. I was, I was actually thinking about doing a podcast um, on this, but I didn't know if it was a strong enough topic that anybody would want to hear it. But, you know, having those two drinks those those two beers so i had one long neck i think in america you call it a 40 ounce i'm not sure uh exactly but i've seen um i've seen people say that that what we call a long neck in australia which is 750 mils is, is called a 40 ounce in america um so in australia if you go to a pub that's two beers it's like ordering two beers and having that which by most people's standards most people that drink alcohol is a very very small amount of alcohol but for me it was enough that i, I felt hung over the next day and I was really analyzing the way that I felt. I was thinking about it in the morning. I was thinking, you know, is, is this that feeling that people that drink regularly talk about, oh, two beers doesn't affect me at all. And it, pro it probably is because I could have, you know, I wasn't hung over like I was hanging over a bathroom or anything like that. Like I got up and I functioned through the day, but I couldn't train properly. Like, and what I mean by training properly for me, like I do, I do things like handstands and I'm, you know, doing calisthenics movements and I do mobility work where I can feel if I can't reach my end range, like if I can't get as close to the splits as I normally do. And for me, that was like, that was a really, really big thing. I couldn't, I couldn't do my training properly. And, and I just felt really lethargic and really, uh, I just didn't feel with it. And I, I wake up at 5am and I'm, when I wake up out of bed, I'm, I'm really awake. I don't need a coffee to get going or anything. I feel good. I get up and, and I just get on with my day. You know, I'm doing this podcast here at, at what, 6.50am now, but it's, it was 6.30am when I started. 
And, you know, before I did that, I'd meditated, I'd, you know, gone through some mobility training, I'd done some spine mobility, and I'd done a little bit of research on what I was going to do for this, for this episode. And that was all gone. Like, I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't firing, you know, all my cylinders, I, I wasn't firing my V8 engine, I was only running on four cylinders after that. And so much of that is from what went on in my gut microbiome, because my microbiome was being fed healthy, um, healthy fuel. So the, the good bacteria was thriving up until that point. And as soon as I had those, those two drinks and we did it at a pizza night, you know, <laughs> you know we, we got together with a couple of friends and we all sat around a fire and we ordered pizza for the first time in months. And, uh, and I just thought, ah, look, I'm just gonna have a, a beer. It's, it can't be that bad. And it, it, that, all that unhealthy bacteria, all that bad bacteria that had been starved and that was waiting for that opportunity, it just got everything that it needed. You know, it got those processed foods from the pizza and it got some fuel from the, from the alcohol and it just went bang and it just came back with a vengeance. And so now I'm now having to rebuild my gut microbiome again. Of course, it's not nearly as bad as I was back in my 20s. I'm, I'm not having to like rebuild from scratch, but I, I am absolutely having to rebuild again for a week now. And, and my wife and I made this pact to us last night again, where we both just looked at each other and went, oh my God, I cannot do this anymore. I feel so bad after this week. I just, I just feel so terrible. And it's, it's funny when I say this to people who aren't as passionate about health and fitness as as my wife and I are, people look at us like we're crazy. And people, you know, they, they, they talk, people say things to me like, you know, you're obsessed and this is unhealthy and it's unbalanced. And yeah, you know, it, it, by your standard, maybe this is obsessive. And by their standard, it certainly is obsessive. But that depends who you speak to, you know, like being obsessed with something Depends who I talk to, because if I talk to another healthy person, they wouldn't call it obsessed at all. They'd just call it living. And if I talk to myself 20 years ago when I was 26, I would have called it unbalanced. I would have said, well, that's, that's ridiculous. That's unbalanced. You, you know, you should be able to have fun and you should be able to enjoy yourself on the weekend and still live a healthy life. So it depends who you are and, and what your values are as to whether what I'm talking about here is is considered a balanced or an unbalanced life or whether it's considered obsessive or not. Because my 26 year old self wouldn't have agreed with what I'm doing now, but I don't agree with what my 26 year old self did. And I don't agree with the, the lifestyle choices that I made back then anymore. And the reason why I don't is, you know, I, I, I still speak to people now where they say, oh, I couldn't live like that. It's not living if you can't enjoy a beer on the weekend or if you can't, you know, have, some of, you know, some chocolates or some chips or whatever, like that's not living. Well, for me, it's actually not living to do it the other way. And I'll never say never. So, you know, I'm, I was going to say I'm, I'm, I'm never going to have a beer again, but I'm, I'm not going to say that because I'm sure I will. But the way that I feel now after having those two beers a week ago and after eating that pizza and after having those, that bit of chocolate this week, um, I feel like I don't want to go near anything like that for a very long period of time because the healthier I get and the better relationship that I develop with my gut microbiome, with my gut health, the, the, more, the, the, the more that I come to a state of health, the better that I can get my body looking and feeling. So, you know, as I'm, as I'm getting older and as I'm working to build muscle and I'm working to create the best body that I can have and the way that I feel, when I, for the first time ever in my life, I don't have a battle with, oh, I really want to have a beer or I really want to do this. Or, you know, I, I really feel like I want to, but I shouldn't do it, but I shouldn't do it. I don't go through that battle anymore because I've, because I've starved that microbiome. I don't, it's not communicating with my brain that way anymore. So it's always a choice that I make. And I sit there and I think, ah, you know, it's not going to be that bad. And I feel like having a bit of fun. But every time I do it, and, and it, this year, I, I think I've had, I've drank alcohol maybe two or three times. And every time I do it, I always, and I'm, I'm just saying alcohol, because alcohol for me, and I'll talk about this in a sec, alcohol is always the catalyst for everything that I do that I don't want to do. <laughs> I, would never, I would never eat these other foods or, or, or make other poor choices if it wasn't for alcohol. But whenever I do it, 
I really think afterwards to my, it, I don't think, I can feel so clearly that it isn't worth it for me anymore. I don't, I don't get anything positive out of it. Like when I think of the experience that I had when I was sitting around with my family and friends and, and we we're all chatting and having a good time, it wasn't enhanced by the alcohol that I had and it wasn't enhanced by the pizza that I ate. I would have actually, in fact, had a better time if I had have sat around and didn't drink alcohol and ate foods that I would normally eat, so healthier food, because my gut felt terrible straight away and I, <laughs> I, went, I, I didn't have a good sleep because I'd, had, I'd made poor food choices and I drank alcohol. And the next day I just felt like crap. And the whole week I felt like crap. I basically had a whole week where my training was really negatively affected, which for me is a really, really big deal. And anybody that's in our UMS online personal training tribe that works with me online, you guys are all in this boat. There's nobody in there that isn't committed to their health and fitness. You're all in this place where you want to really make a dent in your health and fitness. And we're, we're an older tribe as well. You know, it's, it's all people that are, that are parents or, you know, that have older kids. You know, we've got people in their 50s and 60s uh, and even in their 70s in there. Um, and so they're all, you know, I'm, I'm communicating. I, I know that I'm talking to people that are all passionate about getting the most out of their health. And, and these days there's this, new, there's this new term that I've only heard in the last, I don't know, maybe five to eight years or something called biohacking now. You know, people are all about biohacking and, you know, getting the most that they can out of their body. And it's definitely something I do. But if you follow our content, I, I don't talk about biohacking. But, you know, I'm always looking at ways that I can improve my health, that I can get more out of my body. And if you're watching this, I guarantee you that fixing up your microbiome and, and working from the inside out is going to have one of the biggest impacts that you can have on your body. And so what can you do? So how, how can you get started? What are, the, what are the things that you can that you can start doing? Well, one of the first things that I highly recommend that you do is that you start looking at what you need to eliminate, what you need to get rid of. Because, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've, talk, I've talked about the the way that bacteria is opportunistic. And so if you're trying to create a healthy microbiome by eating certain foods, then, but then every weekend, uh, you know, if it's within a seven day period that you're consuming any kind of food that feeds the negative bad bacteria, then you're just creating this loop. You're just creating this cycle where you slowly starve the, the bad bacteria and then you feed it again and it just, it takes over again. So the only way you'll ever truly reclaim your gut microbiome is if you completely eliminate certain foods. And so the way that I went through this, because if you, if you listen to everything that I'm saying, and maybe you're looking at your own life and the, and the foods that you eat, and you're looking at the things that I'm talking about, and you're just seeing this massive gap between where you are and where, what I'm talking about. And I remember being there. I've got a friend who is a, a very close friend of mine who I went to high school with and moved out of home with and who's been on this journey for a few years before me and has always been more disciplined than I have. He never struggled with uh, drug and alcohol addiction or abuse. Um, and he's, you can go and check him out on Instagram, Origin of Energy, Origin of Energy. Um, he's a close friend of mine, Aaron McKenzie, and he is somebody that I always looked at for inspiration because he was he was doing all of this stuff way before I was. And he still to this day makes me look like an unhealthy person with the, the choices that he makes with his, <laughs> with his nutrition. Um, but what I did was rather than look at how far away I was from somebody that was really healthy, I would look at what is the one thing that I can do and that I think I can maintain. So come up with all these different, so I'm, I'm about to talk you through a whole bunch of different things that you can do to improve your gut microbiome now, but then maybe choose four of them. Maybe so. Maybe if you rewatch this, this um, or re-listen to this podcast, choose four things that you can do here that you think yes, I can do that, and that will help my microbiome. So, um, sleep is one of the first things. A good circadian rhythm. So sleep actually uh, positively impacts your gut microbiome. And so what do I mean by a good circadian rhythm? I mean, 
going to bed and rising relatively in alignment with when the sun sets and rises. So that means that as the sun goes down, um, reduce your exposure to blue light. So turn off the overhead lights, don't watch TV past 7 p.m., uh, at least on weeknights. You know, I, I get that maybe once or twice a week, maybe I'll stay up until 8 or 8.30 watching TV. But I, tr I truly, from the bottom of my heart, don't watch TV be or use screens beyond 8 or 8.30 p.m. ever. Uh, and then you'll be able to have a healthy sleep pattern. The next one is to reduce stress. So even a daily meditation of 10 minutes is enough to increase your, uh, improve your gut microbiome. So then we look at the foods that you can eliminate to, uh, to increase, uh, improve your, your microbiome. So alcohol, for me, alcohol is number one because I look at all of the poor food choice. I said before, the, all of the bad choices that I ever make in my life are all fueled by alcohol. Like, so if I go back to when I used to take drugs, when I was in my twenties, I would, virtually like um in my mid to late 20s i would never like i was trying to cut these habits out of my life and i would never when i was sober make a choice to go and have recreational drugs i wouldn't be sitting there when i was sober going oh you know what tonight i'm going to go and get on it with my friends and i'm going to go and party and go clubbing it would be that i would say tonight i'm having a quiet night i'm not going to do any of that so i'll just have a couple of beers and as soon as i had a couple of beers you just have a rubber arm and people can just bend your arm so easily and boom you're off making all these horrible choices and you just find yourself waking up the next day going oh my god why did i do all of that and so once i recognize that the hardest choice for me and and probably the hardest one to really give up because it's so socially acceptable in the western world drinking alcohol um, in Australia is just so socially acceptable. Like when you go out and people offer you a drink and you say no, people look at you and go, well, why not? You know, why, why won't you have a drink? It's like the one, the one drug that you have to justify why you won't do it. So cutting alcohol out was the first thing because when I, when I didn't drink alcohol, I wouldn't then go and take drugs and I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't go and order fast food and eat shit food. I wouldn't do that when I was sober. So alcohol is a big one for me. The next one is is processed foods. So any kind, basically any takeaway, any anywhere you go. And even if you go and get healthy takeaway, this was a really hard thing for me to learn as well. Because I, when I was, I was going through this process and it was really funny, my journey was I would always go and see my friend Aaron and I'd talk to him about all these incredible changes that I was making. And he was always so, um, so friendly to me and so uh constructive and you go oh yeah yeah cool but then and i talk about how i don't eat you know mcdonald's anymore and i and i don't eat hungry jacks and i just eat um thai food you know when i go out and stuff and he'd smile and then he'd talk to me about how bad the quality of oil that they use in takeaway uh thai food and things are and so even though you're getting you know you can watch them stir frying the vegetables up and stir frying the meat up right in front of you you can see that it's fresh fresh foods and it's vegetables but it is always cooked with the lowest quality oil you're never getting takeaway food that is cooked with decent oil because they have to keep their costs down and they have to be able to make a profit and the profit margins with takeaway food or with any any food any restauranting business the profit margins are so low that um they, the only way that they can make money is to, to, to buy food in bulk and buy the lowest quality food. And so, um, you know, vegetable oils and especially low quality vegetable oils are, are really bad for the gut microbiome as well. And they're bad for a whole lot of other health reasons as well. They've, they've got trans fat, the, the fat mutates to trans fatty acids, which causes cellular damage, um, raise cholesterol, heart disease, all this terrible stuff. So Takeaway food was another big one for me. It was, uh, and I truly believe that um, if you don't prepare your own food, that if you don't take control of the food that you eat yourself, for, 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 for me, I've learned that it was, it was impossible to get my microbiome healthy and get my gut health healthy. And it was impossible to reclaim my own health and to reduce inflammation and, and get to the state of health that I'm at now. So that's a really big one as well, cooking your own foods. 
eating 30 varieties of vegetable uh, of plant in a week, not a vegetable. So a variety of plant fruit, vegetable, of course, so different varieties, but herbs and spices are also a variety. So if you cook a dish that contains five herbs and spices in it that you've put in yourself, that's five plant varieties. Uh, nuts and seeds are also um, plant varieties as well and grains. So 30 varieties is really good. Um, eating fermented foods is good. I make my own sauerkraut at home and I find that that's quite a fun, like the further you go down this, this route, like I find ways to make this fun and exciting. And, you know, we all need hobbies and we need things that we can, you know, get excited about. So I, I ferment foods and hooray, what, let's all have a fermenting party. Isn't that exciting, everybody? I know that sounds so stupid. Um, you know, get excited about fermenting foods. But uh, it does, you know, you get right into it and you get really proud of yourself when you take your own sauerkraut out of the out of the jar and you can you eat it yourself. And, you know, my wife and my son get really into it, too. Um, so that's another one. Uh, any any packaged food, really, I was going to say sugary sweets, but really anything that you've got to open the packet to get to uh, eliminating that. So biscuits, chocolate, lollies ice cream, you know, anything that you buy that you have to open a packet to get to to eat. It's just it's just filled with it's processed refined food. It's 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 really bad for your uh, for your gut health. And so I know that I've said a lot there. And so and that's all stuff that I do myself. But if when you're looking at, at this and thinking, where do I get started? Try to choose four of those things that you think you could do yourself. And it could be as simple as, you know, you could, you could say, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking alcohol. I'm going to try to sleep at a certain time. I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes a day and I'm going to um, start preparing my own meals. I'm going to start cooking my own meals, whatever it is. It could be it could be less than that. It could be that I'm going to start having 30 vegetables a week and eating more fermented foods and not eating sugary treats or things like that. You know, it's the, the there's a my my advice is that although I'm giving you these things that I do and I'm giving you tools that you can use is that find what works for you, because what happens is the journey to improving your microbiome and improving your health and reclaiming the health of your body. It's not like, okay, this is where you're living now. You're living in this unhealthy state. You're not, you're not working on a healthy gut microbiome. And this is where living in a really healthy state and, and, and really working on your microbiome is. It's not one step to get to there. It's like a ladder and you have to climb each step one at a time. And I do believe that going all in on things is a really, really good way to do it. Like you don't want to, I don't, I shouldn't say you don't want to. It didn't work for me to think I'm going to do all of these things from Monday to Friday, but then on the weekend, I'm going to, uh, you know, loosen my belt and, and just relax and have a bit more fun. And I really thought that that would be a, a, a step up from where I was. But the problem is you just stay on that cycle that I spoke about before where you starve all of the, the unhealthy bacteria during the week when you're making good choices and you feed all of the good bacteria. But then as soon as you get to the weekend, you just feed the unhealthy bacteria and you starve the good bacteria and you just keep yo-yoing you know, in your gut. Um, and that's why if you've tried this yourself, you you know you get to Monday after you've made these poor choices on the weekend and your gut just feels terrible. You just feel you know inflamed there, and you spend the week trying to eat good food, and you get to Friday and you feel really good, and then you just go through that cycle again. And so I believe that what works for me it was much better to um, just go all in on something. And so when I went all in on not drinking alcohol, by far the hardest time was that first weekend. So, you know, you get through the week where you don't drink alcohol and then you get to the weekend where you would normally drink alcohol and you really are struggling. But if you get through that one weekend where you don't have a single drop of alcohol or whatever it is, where you don't have any sugary sweets, where you don't have any, you know, packaged foods that you have to open, where you don't have any fast foods, where you, so you go through a full seven day period. Not only does the gut microbiome um, really improve in that period of time, not only does the, un, the healthy bacteria that's communicating with your brain causing these um, terrible choices to be made st um, starve to a, a really to a level where it's really 
um, struggling to uh, maintain this control over your choices and over your brain and over your um, cravings. But you, you start to train the muscle of discipline. And what happens when you get through to that first Monday, so you know, seven days later, you, you just feel so empowered. You, you, like, you have this feeling of, I can do this, I can make it happen. And so whatever those choices are that you decide to do from that list that I've said before, go all in on it. So, and if four of them is too many for you, choose one. Choose one thing, but do not compromise on it. No matter what, do not compromise on it. And then once you get, you'll get through this period of time after about 20 days, after about three weeks, you'll get through this period where it starts becoming easy and it starts becoming, you, you won't feel cravings for that thing anymore, for that food, for that alcohol, for whatever it is. It'll more be that it's like a choice within your mind that I spoke to you about where you'll start thinking, do I want to do this? Do I, yeah, I want to do it. No, nah, I don't want to do it. But it's not like a craving for it. And when you get to that point, then it starts to become easier. And that's when, in my experience, what works for me is that's when I will start to go, okay, what's the next thing that I can do? And that's where I'm at with my life. What I do is it, I actually do this every several months. I'll start to think, what can I do that I'm not currently doing that would make my health a little bit better? And so <laughs> in the last week for me, it's really, really clear and really obvious to me that the thing that I can do is I can just not drink alcohol at all anymore. It just, it, it just doesn't serve me f um, for what I want in my life anymore. I'm 46 now and I still have a lot that I want to achieve. You know, the business that my brother Yanni and I, Unity Gym Online, that we're creating and that we're building, we have big aspirations for where we want to take it. Uh, and, you know, what I want for my my relationship with the relationship that I have with my son, the inspiration that I want to be for him, you know, he's already starting to point out, you know, he already like he's, he's almost eight now, he's seven and a half. And he already says things to me where he can, he can recognize the, the level of health and the strength that I have in my body versus the dads of all of his friends. And so that's programming his mind of what he perceives as as healthy and as normal and, and what he, the aspirations that he wants when he grows up, you know, and, and people, I've heard people talk about how can I get my kids to do this? Well, children do what you do, not what you say. So you can't tell your kids what to do. You can show them what to do. And, you know, so there's all these reasons why for me, you know, I'm, I'm on this journey and why I want to do it. And if you're listening to this podcast or watching this um, you know, live stream with me here. I can see we've got 12 people on the live stream. Give me a shout out. Say, say hi from wherever you are in the world. Say hi from here or hi from there. So I know where you guys are watching from. That would, that would mean a lot to me to, if, if you all did that right now quickly. Um, but if you're watching this still, then you obviously want to improve your health and fitness. And you can do this. You, you can do this. You are older now than you were before. You are wise enough now. Just the fact that you're even listening to this podcast or watching this live stream shows me and shows you that you are ready for this change because you're looking for the information. And if this is the first step, if, if the first step for you is that you've gone on YouTube and, and searched for gut health and this has come up for you, then you, are, you have already taken the first step towards reclaiming your gut health and improving your gut health. And if you didn't, if you're tuning in late and you didn't hear this from the start, you know, increased gut health gives you a reduced risk of disease, it increases your energy levels, it improves your well-being, it improves your happiness, um, you know, it helps your digestion, it, you know, produces essential nutrients, it regulates the immune system. Um, it, it just does so much for you. And so you've already made that choice. You've already said, I want to do this. So the next step for you is to, you've, you've listened to this, you've looked at the whole spectrum of things that you can do, write them all down and circle a couple that you can actually do. And then recognize that it is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. There are going to be times, the first time that you feel that um, craving for the food that you've decided that you're not going to eat anymore, you will for the first time ever be able to go, ah, that's that bacteria in my gut that's saying, feed me, feed me, I need food. 
And you'll be able to have a different um, relationship with that feeling of craving that you've ever had before. And if, if you have the opportunity, if you're in, in a space where you feel that craving, where you can sit with it, rather than just continuing through whatever it is that you're doing, just stop for a moment and close your eyes and just sit with that feeling for a minute. And, you know, just spend a moment in time, whatever a moment is for you. It could be several seconds, it could be several minutes where you just sit there and sit with that feeling and recognize that you can not give into it. You can, you know, push through it and do something else and make a different choice for your life. And that's the only way that we ever, um, you know, that we can ever change our health is if we start making different choices. Because if you, you know, keep making the same choices, you're going to keep getting more of what you've already got. So I hope that helps. I really do. I hope that you guys learned something. And if you, this, I did this episode. Hi, Lewis from Portugal. Thank you so much for, uh, for commenting. Great to see somebody's uh, said hello. <laughs> it, I, I did this whole episode because a lot of people requested to, that I would do an episode on gut health. So if you've got any questions or if you'd like anything for my brother Yanni and I to talk about, Yanni will be back next week, then we can, we can talk about that. We can talk more about gut health if you want. My brother's got his own, my brother could do a whole episode on gut health himself because he's got his own journey with it. Um, he's, he battles with depression and he's been on anti-depression medication for several years now and he's weaning himself off the anti-depression medication because what he's learned about gut health is that it's this massive cycle with um, antidepressants and with gut health because poor gut health um, is actually a cause for depression. There's a lot of new um, research that's showing that to fix depression, you have to start with gut health. But then antidepressants actually cause destruction to gut health. That's one of those medications that are really negative for the microbiome. So, you know, Yanni's learned about this um, destructive cycle that goes on that he's been on. And so he's been working to wean himself off his medication and to reclaim his gut health. So he could do an entire episode on that himself. So if that's something that you guys uh, want to talk about, you can hear about that because he, you know, I've shared my experience and he's got an incredible experience with that, um, you know, with, with beating depression and, uh, and reclaiming gut health and getting off antidepressants. So that's something we could talk about. But if there's anything else that you'd like us to talk about, then let us know in the comments and I will do an episode. And thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Hope you learned something from this. And I hope that I've empowered you to start making some better choices for your gut health. And I'll, I'll see you in our next episode.